as you can see, I'm Christine Watkins, and this is not. No. Let's start that over. <laughs> okay, do it again. Okay. All right, you ready? Will you get started? Ready. Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I am Christine Bacon. I am clearly not Christine Watkins, nor is my guest, though. I do have the privilege of interviewing today Oswaldo Sanchez. I know I'm supposed to say Sanchez, <laughs> but it just sounds so much better saying Sanchez. Oswaldo, did I do okay? Perfect, perfect. Well, we have invited Oswaldo to be on the show today because he has a phenomenal testimony. And what I really like is that he's only 17 years old. And a lot of the people that I've interviewed, and I know that Christine has interviewed in the past, they, you know, 30, 40, 50 years old, and then their life has changed. It's really wonderful when you can find someone as young as Oswaldo, who has already been transformed by the Lord. So Oswaldo, welcome. Thank you. I grew up in, in a town called Guadalajara in Mexico. As I was growing up, our religious background was Sunday mass here and there, but not all the time. And as time went on, we just, we drifted away from the faith. There was a point, I would say we were lukewarm. We would say yes to God, you know, sometimes, and sometimes we would say no to God. One of the main things that really changed my life was seeing my dad saying yes to God in those moments when he said yes to God. So when I was little, about five to seven years old, my dad was really on fire for the faith, but my mom, my mom was not. <laughs> my mom was not on fire for the faith. Right. And we can see how the devil can get in families, especially when once one of the one of the family members is really on fire for the faith, but the other person and is the other not. is not. Yes. Yeah, it's exactly. like unequally yoked at that time. Yeah. Can I ask you a question before you go further? When for you sure. say they were kind of there and they kind of weren't, can you give me an example? Like, were you like going to mass, or you weren't really going to mass, or you were praying rosaries, or what do you mean by on and off? We would sometimes go to Mass, and then we would sometimes pray rosary most of the nights, and sometimes my dad would go to retreats, but sometimes it was just nothing, and it was just the opposite. Then we would get my mom being really angry and really mad, and there was all this fighting, so it was really a back and forward. It was not okay. stable at all. And okay, so, so keep going then. Yeah, I think... It was because my mom wasn't there and my dad was there. So that really made things different. And so as I grew up, I learned about Jesus in a certain way. I mean, I knew God was God and I knew that he existed and that he made me and that he loved me. But I didn't understand much after that. I never understood the Eucharist. When I went to Mass, I thought it was symbolic. I thought it was something that, you know, you go to and that's it. I mean, most, most Catholics in Mexico are just out of tradition right because their parents tell them to go and the parents of their parents told them to right. go so most of the country is just catholic out of out of family traditions not really out of love for jesus which is right. sad it, it can be really sad so i grew up just like that and i grew up a single child until i was seven then we then my brother was born and that changed our lives because we started struggling financially and after that my dad just kind of just he left the faith to be honest he just le he left the faith because he felt like he wasn't getting what he needed what he wanted and he was expecting so much from god certain things that god just wasn't able to give him at that god could have given it to him give it, giving it to him but wasn't willing to give him. he wasn't willing to give him yeah and then my dad was he, he he left the faith. He left the faith. He came to the United States. We followed him uh, a year later. We followed him, and I was around 10, 10 years old. My 11th, my 11th birthday was uh, in California, here in California. And we moved first uh, to a house with my aunt uh, here in California. And I, I grew up there, and the atmosphere was really bad. I mean, my cousin was just... My family was not there. I mean, God was completely taken out of the picture. He was just gone. And I had to just, I lived with that. And I, I loved the fact that back in Mexico, I couldn't have stuff, materialist, you know, just material Correct. stuff. Uh, we were kind of poor. And 
I come here to this country and I get everything I ever wanted, right? I get I get video games, I get tablets, I get everything. I could just get whatever, whenever, however. As time went on, I I I was just submerged into the industry of just just video games, videos, just binge watching, just I I got I really, really fell deep into that, especially video games. And I became super addicted. And as you start doing that, you just become empty. You become so empty. And later on, someone showed me pornography, pornography around the age of 10, 11. And then everything just went downhill from there. I mean, my whole life up until my conversion really was just um, being addicted to pornography and masturbation. And that was one of the demons that, you know, just held everything in, in place together, yeah. that held everything to get together. So as time goes on, uh, I'm just, I get more grumpy, right? I mean, I'm also becoming a teenager. So I get right. more grumpy. I, I'm i hurt because my, my family my parents would come together then they would separate and they would come together and then they would separate and we're traveling from state to state so we go to Texas because my dad got a got a job offering and then we go to Iowa then we go to Texas then we go back and forward back to California and it's just one big mess so no stability at a time in your life when stability was necessary yes yes uh, and I was just growing up just yeah doing just I was sheltering myself from all this pain inside my little world inside my little technology world, inside my little fantasy world that didn't they didn't exist, right? It, I mean, it was just, it's not, it's not real. It was just video games, movies, and yeah, just pornography and at a very young age. And no one ever told Can me Can I anything. ask you a question real quick? What's yes. the pain? Because other people would listen and people who are more worldly would hear, okay, mm -hmm. so games are fun and you're watching porn, which is kind of fun to watch you know, pleasuring yourself. So what's so bad about that? What, what, what pain were you feeling? I was, empty. and just the emptiness. I was empty. Mm -hmm. I was very empty and each time more and more and more. So I, I realized this is not filling my emptiness. I got to do something else. So I was a freshman. I was a freshman starting high school from eighth grade to freshman year. And I started hanging out with really bad kids and they were involved with gangs. Later on, I, I realized that. And so we, I just started smoking, started smoking a lot of marijuana, started to just the dose. Like I smoked a lot. Like first it was not that much, but as time went on, I would start using the the chemical called as THD. And we would just sort of separate it and, you know, it was harder and harder. It was stronger and stronger every time. And it sure. was really bad. And I started getting these tendencies to just get mad and rage out at home. And my parents didn't know because I was very sneaky. I started s stealing, basically, well, taking their car at night. I would like sneak out my house and just go partying all the time. And I still was empty. And I was trying to bring with me as many friends, quote unquote, right um, down with me as I as I, as I could because I mean I didn't treat them I wasn't a real friend to them and I just wanted to bring everyone down I mean if I'm going down this hole I want to you know have quote-unquote fun with these people too so I just started smoking I started having sexual relationships at yeah at a young age I mean I was like 14 15 sort of um and so I started doing all this stuff and you know I just start I just start dating different girls and just leaving one, going to the next one and just keep smoking and my life is a mess and I don't care about anything. And at, at a certain point, I used to hide the fact that I used to smoke from my parents, but at a certain point, I just stopped hiding it. It's just didn't care. I just didn't care. Mm -hmm. And my parents. Isn't it crazy how sin takes you down? It, sin just goes further and further. And it's you want to take others with you because it truly is a, a phrase when you say misery likes company. I don't want to be miserable by myself. And that kind of, kind of is crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. But it's true. It's true. Mm -hmm. Sadly. But continue, please. Yeah, so I'm just going down this spiral. This I'm going down this hole, and it's not stopping, and I'm just going down, and it doesn't seem to stop. And things get, kept getting worse. And as, at a certain point in my life, I, I think to myself, if if God is real, 
if God is real, why is why is this happening to me? Why do I feel so empty? Why are my parents always getting separated? Why are they always so mad? Why are we why are we struggling in so many aspects? Why, why am I falling into why am I doing this? What am I doing with my life? And then instead of taking responsibility for my life, I turn to God and I say, it's your fault. You made all of this. You messed up. I hate you. And I started cussing at God. I remember I would like have a phrase just to cuss at God, just complete blasphemy. And I just, I hated God. I hated him. And and, and I, any idea of a God, because as time went on, as the media took me, more down that that hole deeper and deeper deeper and deeper you know the idea of god keeps getting distorted every time so i kept thinking to myself if there is a god you know if if there if there is someone out there that supposedly created everything i just hate him and i was also looking very i was very interested into the occult into diabolical stuff uh that just kind of dragged me little by little Uh, that really caught my attention can I, yeah, can I ask you about that? So as we just said, sin just goes and it spirals and it takes you further and further, but not everybody, you know, dabbles in the occult. What was your first exposure to the occult? What made you think, I want to, I want to try this. Was there a conscious thought? Was it someone that introduced you to it? When did that happen? Because uh, I think everybody thinks, oh, that won't happen to me. I had, I mean... Just shows and movies, to be honest. I mean, shows and movies nowadays are just completely diabolical. Secular movies, secular shows, yeah, especially just supposedly for kids, right? Um, I don't know. I mean, all these things, all these references. In the, in the back of my mind, when I was younger, when my dad was really on fire for the faith, he was looking to, to just serve as a minister in the deliverance ministry. And I, I got to see certain things, but they're really hidden in the back of my mind. So to myself, I'm thinking, well, there is something, right? If there's a spiritual world, just this misery, this loneliness that led me to it. So if there is something out there, if there is, you know, I, if I could get a hold of the spiritual world in some sort of way, I want to do it. So I just start Googling satanic invocations i just started googling anything that comes to mind wow and the craziest thing is that it's at school i'm doing this at school at a public school with a computer from school so i mean if i if you can google that on the computer on the school computer what else can't you google especially at school right and no one cares right, right. The teachers don't care it's a secular school and so I just, I just do it. I keep. And you're a freshman at this time. You're about a freshman. I'm about, yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm pretty young, and then, well, I'm still pretty young, but (laughs) younger. You are. Yeah. But a mature young. (laughs) The Lord. (laughs) That's what what the Lord's doing. But, anyways, Mm -hmm. I just. I just do it. I keep repeating these words that says on on the computer. I keep repeating them over and over and over again. And I say, ha, nothing happened, right? It's all fake. This this is just complete nonsense. I knew there was not a spiritual world. I knew there was nothing. I knew that God's just not real, a fake. Uh, and so I was like, now I'm an atheist. I don't want to say troublemaking kid, but a kid who just doesn't care to actually making this decision of I'm an atheist. I don't, I don't need God. I don't want God. He doesn't exist. If Satan doesn't exist... Neither does God, so I don't care. What did that do? Did that make life easier for you? Were you more liberated? Or did you feel any more stress hitting you at that point? Or Something must have happened when you just make that kind of announcement, right? Something did happen. Not what, it's, not what I expected. So what happened is that I just cared less. So I was pretty much just a troublemaker, but I mean, I was a troublemaker, but I just deep inside, I just didn't care. I just didn't care and I cared less. But when I, when I said that, I realized, well, if there is no God, if there is no such thing as heaven and hell, why am I worrying about being good? Well, why am I, why do I struggle? What's this little voice in me that tells me that I shouldn't do what I'm supposed, what I'm doing right now, what I feel like I'm supposed to be doing, but this voice tells me I'm not supposed to be doing it. So I just, I just live. I just forget. I just, I just 
don't think about it. I just go down deeper. You down were the trying hole. to silence it, though, weren't you? Because you're sitting here just saying I'm an atheist, and yet you're trying to tune out this voice that you heard deep down. I mean, your spirit knew God existed. And yet you're try it sounds like you're playing a head game to try to convince yourself God doesn't exist God doesn't exist God doesn't exist but he wouldn't let you go would he That's literally that's literally what happened And so he knew the only way to bring me closer to him was to show me that there was a spiritual world So what happened is that as I was going down deeper in my sins not only did it was I just sinning because I didn't care? But there was something else now. It was like a big oppression. It was a big cloud over my head. Something that just didn't let me think. Something that just didn't let me let me just be rational. I just I was pushed to do things I didn't want to do. I mean, I thought they were too extreme. And I, I just started smoking way more. I started doing other types of drugs. I tried LSD. I just... I did all this stuff. Everything got worse. My sexual sins got way worse. I mean, to say to the point that everything started shifting even towards just homosexuality, just just completely. I mean, liking girls and liking boys, but just all for the sexual pleasure. I mean, everything just became horrible, horrible, 10 times right. more horrible, 20 times more horrible. But can I stop you there? So do you feel so you said you were oppressed? Did you feel any physical pressure did you just feel spiritual can you kind of dig deeper into that oppression did you hear anything talking to your mind I mean what you know what I'm saying because a lot of people who are watching this aren't exactly sure what you say I felt oppressed what that really means is there any way to make that more tangible like a switch like all of a sudden something diabolical came upon you or what for sure just like something it was also inside me something something was also inside my body actually something was just moving me to do everything that i didn't want to do it was it was like another voice it was another voice okay. telling me fighting off that little voice and that little voice became almost non-existent and this other voice came in and was just telling me do this do that keep smoking keep doing this keep falling into into this and at that moment, I mean, I didn't know that it was falling into sin. I just thought it was having fun. But I still kept right. feeling empty and more empty and more empty. And things got worse. Nothing really showed up physically until I I left the town where I was living at. I was living with my parents. And I left and I said, I don't want to be with you guys anymore. You guys, they got really strict about me not smoking and stuff and of course i mean they're my parents and i got really mad at the time and i said i don't want to be with you guys i'm leaving and i left somehow i left town i don't remember how i got the ticket i don't remember how i don't remember how things happened but they happened wow yeah wow. uh my mind was just everywhere i would pass i would be passed out for many days sometimes from just drinking and smoking way too much just completely my mind just blank just blank i came back to california and things became much much worse and as time passed by this devilish presence kept appearing more and more so i would smoke and it was almost as it was i was brought up i was brought i was brought down into hell it was almost as if i was walking in hell yeah i was i was in hell every time i would smoke what? so you said this devilish voice or whatever kept coming and getting stronger were you hearing more of it clearly in your head were you feeling it in your spirit did you start becoming conscious of the fact that it wasn't just you that there was some evil thing along with you or in you or okay. yes I, I, I always like to try to be a little bit more specific that's why I'm asking it this way because when people are listening they're gonna think how do you know that's what I hear from people how, how do you know what does it sound like what does it look like so you're just we're saying it was you felt it in your head you felt it in your body and you felt it getting louder and more and louder demanding. And more demanding louder just louder more of a clear voice just like you said more of a clear voice it was clearer and clearer that it was something off something was off i used to think this is just the way i am but then i realized as time went on there's definitely something here this voice is getting creepier and yeah all these 
thoughts would come to my mind and every time someone would deny drugs to me i would just go into a crazy rage and i would lose almost control of all my body and just start physically punching stuff breaking stuff grabbing stuff that was too heavy for me just doing stuff that wasn't possible with my normal strength it just mm -hmm. it just wasn't possible uh it was supernatural and that started manifesting more and more and more and so it was almost as if my conscience is it's almost as if i was getting lost inside my own head something else was taking over little by little every sin i committed it would take more control of me that's how it felt yeah. it would take more control physically more control mentally more control it just it kept doing its thing and it kept leading me more to sin so it was a never-ending spiral that kept going down one thing yeah. led, to, led to another and and just like that so well hold on here's what i find very curious oswaldo is you many people who deal with this just go and go and go and they don't fight it so much but you felt it you were conscious you knew it wasn't right might i ask you are you aware of maybe your parents prayer life were they praying for you what do you think allowed you to still be a little bit conscious of the fact that this wasn't me there was something in me do you, do you think it was your previous prayer life do you think it was your parent does that help does that, yes, yes. Is that a fair question? It's a, it's a great question. Actually, what came to mind is that at that time, my grandma was praying her rosary almost every day. She was praying her rosary for every person in her family. and Praise God. I'm sure that that led to great, amazing things. I'm here speaking to you now. So those are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Those are the fruits of Mary. Mm -hmm. Well, the Holy Spirit through Mary. And so yeah. I just... Yeah, I start realizing that something's wrong, but I can't fight it at this point. It's too strong and I can't do anything about it. And then my parents come back because I had a weird, crazy episode where I got out of control. I broke almost everything in the house. My family had to call the cops. And I just told them when the cops came to me, the devil knows how to be sneaky and how to be a liar and a deceiver. But God uses it to God used this. And so for his glory for his glory i don't know where the where the cops were going to take me but i put a whole nother face a uh, sad puppy face and i went up to the cops and said oh i'm just i'm just sad i'm just i'm just depressed i i can't do this anymore so they took me to a hospital and i was i was locked up in there for three days and they were checking me they were studying me they were just analyzing my brain my just the way i thought they were just psychoanalyzing me and they didn't find anything wrong with me that's the craziest thing while i was there they didn't find anything wrong with me and they told my parents and my family this kid's perfectly fine he might have some behavioral issues but it's all up to you guys well my family was freaked out what is going on why is he going crazy and because this isn't the little boy that we raised exactly. so we have no idea why he's so radical exactly it must have freaked them out i know you're too young to have children of your own but as parents yeah you're doing everything you can you're doing your prayers you're yeah so it must have scared them totally it scared him so much that my dad ended up going back to the lord and he ended up going to mm -hmm. to eucharistic adoration so he went to the chapel almost every day and he went to pray just for me but things things got really bad at home so as he as he kept doing that my mom would attack him my grandma would attack him uh, my little brother would attack him everyone would just attack my dad because he was the only one going to eucharistic adoration uh, wow. yeah i don't know how anyone else's prayer lives was i know my grandma was praying her rosary but i do know that there was still something just attacking my dad through her same with my mom and everyone's just and not to even i'm not even mentioning myself which i was the one that was attacking him the most yeah and brought it in exactly you know when you prayed those prayers those occultic prayers you brought it in I brought it in and everything was just chaos it was just chaos my family was complete chaos and i know that entered through what through what i did 
but my dad was trying to get rid of it with the power of Jesus, right? Just going to Jesus and asking him to heal his son, to heal his family. And he kept going to Jesus every day and Jesus totally answered his prayer. And then when we come back, you can say how this changed. So I am Christine Bacon. You are not Christine Watkins, not Christine Watkins. <laughs> but all of you are watching Find Your Way Home. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Christine Bacon, and you guys have been listening to a powerful testimony of this young man of God, the 17-year-old Oswaldo Sanchez, who, if you were listening for the first part of the show, has started telling the story about demonic oppression that he was experiencing. I don't know, is it fair to say it was dem demonic possession or oppression? Later on, it became possession. Okay. And so if you don't mind, just take us to before the commercial break, you were saying it had escalated and something had to change. What changed? What happened? Well, just the devil just, yeah, just like we said, these sins, the more I sinned, the more he kept taking control. So it was, I, I was giving him a legal right to be inside my body, inside my mind, inside around me by my sins. Yes. And like I said, things got really bad. Um, in every aspect of my life, my sexual life, my, my addictions, alcohol, drugs, anything. I mean, school was just completely non-existent to me. I would walk out of school, literally walk out of school uh, in the middle of the day just to smoke, just to steal something. I used to steal a lot, uh, just to, to sell drugs, to do anything. I was just completely lost. I was basically just sort of in the streets all the time. I was just in the streets yes. all the time. And you're 14 at this time, 15? How old? I'm around 15, 15 at this time. Okay. And so we were talking that, we were saying that my dad was going to the Eucharistic Chapel to pray, but things were getting worse. But God totally answered his prayer because one night we were, we were in our little dwelling place and I was on the couch where I used to sleep. And this is the craziest part. I think this is this was possession this was possession because what started happening is i started feeling this random energy going through my body back and forward all over my body my legs my feet my head all my arms everything and then then all this energy starts becoming like a little ball and this little ball starts going everywhere right just everywhere everywhere mm -hmm. and out of nowhere my arm just starts moving and everything starts moving by itself. My leg starts wow. moving, my body, my chest starts going in and out. Everything's just super crazy. And at that moment, I, there's just like something opens up in my throat and uh, like another voice, uh, he like a really, really loud voice, like a dragon, like a, like a roaring lion comes out and just starts just uh, like super loud i i can't do it right now because that was not me correct and everything's just crazy this is all happening i don't know what's going on i'm hitting my arms on the table next to me it's hurting i have no idea what's going on and it almost feels like this imagine if you're in a car and this car was just the car was just driving by itself and you can't do anything about it. You might see what's going on and you might see yourself crashing into things while well, the car crashing into things, but you can't do anything. You can't really take the steering wheel. And sometimes I would just be knocked out. So I just didn't know what was going on at all. So my parents come super scared, super worried. They come. They don't know what's going on. My dad has had some experience in the past, in the past. So he just kneels down and prays he starts praying my mom's freaking out next to you next to me he's next to you they're next okay. to me uh everything gets worse this voice gets stronger everything gets stronger physically i get stronger everything's just it's horrible um they start praying they start asking the lord to to just to just heal me they don't know what's going on and so we call a friend of ours who's in the deliverance ministry because my dad always kept contacts. Praise, praise be to God that he did that with his um with his older friends from from back then when he used to be really on fire from the faith. Um, and he just started calling them and and they wouldn't answer. And then he called another guy and they wouldn't and and everything was just the devil was completely cutting the call. He would call him. He he finally called another guy and he would call him and the call would 
just cut when he would answer. And then th they said that the devil would laugh because I, I was completely knocked out at this point. And then the devil would like laugh super loud and then they would call him again and then he would laugh through me again. And eventually they got through a deliverance prayer and that's when things sort of calmed down and I was able to wake up, but I was still there was still something in me so i was like shaking like i just couldn't i didn't know what was going on and my dad has a rosary and this rosary was a really really thin rosary it was a really really small rosary and it was exercised it was an exercised rosary i had no mm -hmm. idea what a blessing was and my dad grabs this rosary and he puts it on my neck and when he puts it on my neck i drop to the floor because it was so heavy it was heavy that it was like actually heavy and i dropped like down a like a chain and i dropped down and i don't know what's going on i start freaking out the devil tries to come up again and my dad i think he just said a prayer he's like go to sleep just go to sleep so i go to bed things or things are just crazy we don't know what's going on so we go to church we go to a church close by our house we go to is this the next day this or is next this day the same it day? was um so it was like see yeah i mean yes yes it was the next day so he puts his rosary around your neck you fall down and you went to bed did you have the rosary around your neck while you were in bed yeah yeah i did i did okay. i was able to keep it on i didn't want it on but i was i was able to keep you it on you didn't have the power yeah, to take I did, it I off. just couldn't take it off right good yeah and so i'm pretty sure that's what calmed me down and and so afterwards, afterwards, we go to a church. So this happened at night. And the next morning, we go to a church. As soon as we can, we go to Catholic a church? Catholic church. We go. Um, the, the priest was doing confessions. He was he was just he was there. And I get in line. But as I'm walking in the church, I'm just freaking out. And my body starts moving randomly. I can't even look at the cross. Just anything that's holy. Just I don't want to be around. I don't know what's going on and I go up to this priest, I sit at the chair and I'm just like freaking out, I'm like moving and he's just looking at me and he looks at me super scared and he says, go to the bishop, I don't know, he gives me a holy card, he says, pray this, bye, and we were left with no answer and oh, no. yeah, we're outside of the church, we don't know what to do and my parents made some other calls and finally they figure out that there's going to be a healing mass that same night uh, uh, close to our house, relatively close to our house. And so we drive, we drive there, we get there just in time, but I can't come into the church. I had no idea what was going on. We're just driving everywhere and God rearranged everything perfectly. I mean, God knew that there was going to be a healing mass that Saturday at 6 p.m. So he let the demons manifest a Friday night right before that. And so the demon starts manifesting and I can't come into the church. I don't know what's going on. I didn't know. Why gonna... can't you come into the church? I just physically can't. There's something, uh, there's something scary about it. And I, I've been to church before in my life, but I just can't bring myself to even look at the cross. It was physically impossible. And I just can't do this. I, I can't go into the church and I'm just, I, I, we go to, we get to the bathroom of the church sort of, and but I can't go more like I can't go further than that and I sit on the ground and I just won't get up and my dad comes and tries to pick me up and he can't pick me up and I mean I'm a I'm, I'm pretty skinny and just short at that time my dad tries to pick me up he can't then he gets another guy to try to pick me up and they can't they physically can't they said he was heavier than a, than a bunch of bricks and they just couldn't wow. pick me up and I just didn't want to go. I don't know where I was going. I don't know what was, what was happening, but I didn't want to go. I didn't want to be close anywhere near any priest or any anything. I just anything holy. I didn't know that it was holy, but I didn't want to be around anything. But the demons the knew demons, and the they knew. were fighting because they knew they were about to be expelled. Exactly. And. And so, so I, how did you get in the church? Did the priest come up to you or did you? something make you get in there or did you never get in the church we we got just to the bathroom just to the bathroom and you just stayed there i just stayed there and then that's when they were trying to pick me up but then the guy with with my dad he realized that there was just something completely there was something spiritual huh. so he also grabbed yeah. a rosary and he put it on my neck 
again, a different rosary. He put it on my neck and I started to finally walk. And it was like I had just regained my consciousness and I was able to think and to speak. And I was just telling my dad, what's going on? What, what's going on? Where am I? I don't know what's happening. And he would say, just pray, just pray. And they finally mass was starting. They laid me down on a pew. And as mass was starting, the, the, the demon just started yelling super, super loud. It was just oh, a big roar. And everyone was looking back and because we were at the back pew. And everyone was freaked out. So he take me to the sacristy. And we're at the sacristy. And some people come pray for me. And they sit me on a chair. And this chair is right next to the wall. So I start going crazy again and a bunch of people have to hold me down and I was so strong that I broke the wall behind me. Things were getting worse wow. and worse and and again, I don't know what's going on and I'll, I'll regain my consciousness and I'll try to say in our father, but then the demon won't let me say it and then I'll go back into being unconscious, unconscious and I just, I'm, I'm gone and it's just a constant battle. So finally the priest comes after mass, he comes and he's, he tells everyone, get out, just get out. And the priest comes to me, and as he's coming to me, it's like the demons knew that they had to submit to him because they just calmed down. I was just sitting on the chair like like a regular person, and I was sitting on the chair, and as soon as he laid his hands on me, I felt something leave me, and I was back to normal, and I could think, and I could speak wow. for myself, and I was I was free. I was completely free. Just laying his hands on you? He didn't have to... Do any more exorcism or anything? Nothing. He just wow. laid his hands on me. The biggest problem was that I, I didn't know Jesus. I didn't know Jesus and I still didn't believe in Jesus. In my in my head, I was thinking, I'm crazy. I'm crazy. This was something psychological. I don't know what's going on. It was a big trauma. It was something that really haunted me. And I just put it in the back of my mind. And I said, this this never happened. This was this was not real. So as we Wow, you've just church, been through all of that. This thing leaves you and you still don't... I still don't do, believe. I don't do believe. you believe in God yet? You just no, don't... Nothing. Not, nothing. I don't believe. Wow. My heart was hardened. That was hardened. a grace. That was a grace. I just... I just... That you were... Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Keep, keep going then. So, you didn't believe... That would seem to me to be an open door for Satan to come back. Oh, Did he exactly. come back? He came back and many more came back. Many more. And so how do you know what happened? Well, at this point, my dad's telling me more demons are going to come back and you got to keep praying. You got to keep going to mass. And in my head, I'm saying, I just I hate mass. I, I hate praying. I don't even believe in God. I don't think this is real. Why would I do any of this? And I'm just ignoring my dad. But as time goes by, I I actually meet a girl and this girl has a Protestant background and I had, I just wanted nothing to do with Jesus at all. And she comes to me and we ended up becoming good friends. And then we ended up dating. And as time went on, we started sharing stories. And I told her, oh, well, something weird happened here many months ago. But I don't know. I don't know if it was real or not. And she told me, what? I experienced the same things. I've been through sort of the same thing. And I told her, no way. And we have like, we have a very similar background spiritually and i just totally do not want to talk about this anymore and this is all being brought back up and then she says well i actually want to know jesus i actually want to get to know god i've been through many protestant denominations and i haven't been able to feel god there's just something blocking it and in my head i'm thinking oh no what did i get myself into <laughs> right right and, and god just used that because i i didn't want i didn't want to do anything related to god but this girl she was really sweet and so i became really attached to her uh and on and on an and unhealthy way it was very unhealthy i made her my god because after mm -hmm. everything she was seeking god so there was something different about this person compared to all the people i had met in my life so i became very attached and i made her my god i i actually stopped smoking for her I stopped doing all these things, and that was a grace. That was a grace that God used. He, he used her to, to get me to stop smoking, to get me to stop doing all these things. Um, but, of course, we're still saying all of this, and masturbation and pornography never ended. And and I'm still struggling with all of that. And I think it's it's normal 
but God's just telling me in my conscience, again, I hear this this voice that was once gone is coming back and it's telling me this is not right what you're doing and no one had ever taught me anything my dad was really never around to he was on and off here and there but i was growing up as i was becoming a teenager he was never there to explain um anything about just anything sexually how becoming God, a man, yeah, becoming right, a man exactly. anything i just my dad was never there to tell me that so i was completely lost and something inside me told me that it wasn't right and i never i never knew no one told me everyone did it all my friends did it it was normal so this all happening and um i'm very lukewarm less than lukewarm because i don't even believe in god but i'm just going to church sometimes just to please this girl so I'll go to Sunday Mass here and there. And she says, no, but not the Catholic Church. What are you doing there? And I say, well, how c- I come from the Catholic Church. And then my pridefulness starts kicking in. And I say, no, the Catholic Church is a real church, even though I don't even believe in God. And she's like, no. This, so funny. Yeah. yeah. And so this pridefulness. And she's like, why the saints? I don't know. But but because, because I say so, right? And I was just really prideful. But God used all of that. Because eventually I convinced her to go to Mass one day. And we went to Mass, a Sunday Mass. But my heart just wasn't in there at all. I couldn't even listen to the homily. I was just there to convince her that she was wrong. I was just there to convince her that she was wrong. And I was just there for her. It was just, it was all for her, basically. But when she got there, her heart was really, her her heart was actually open. So when she got there, she actually felt Jesus. She said that was the first and only place where she's actually felt Jesus. Later on, we came to realize that. It was the Eucharist. That's the only place where Jesus physically really, he really is there. He's really there physically. But I had no idea about the Eucharist. I had done my first communion in the past when I was a good kid, sort of. But I just never believed. It was just out of tradition. And I just, I, I had the sacraments. I had certain sacraments. But I just, I didn't believe. I didn't believe that God was there because no one explained that to me ever. I heard it was the house of God, and that was it. That was all I knew. So as time goes And you have such a powerful story, but we have about 10 minutes, so I want to make sure you get all of it in there, and I want to keep you on top. So pull us through to when the change took place. For sure. So we're actually there. Um, We're almost there. So when this is happening, when I'm, I'm starting to go to Sunday Mass, and I'm thinking to myself, well... She's, she seems like she's changing. I mean, she's crying. Why don't I feel anything? Why, why don't I feel like, why don't I feel anything? I mean, I can go up there and take the Eucharist. And in my head, I, I thought it was a symbol. I said, I could go up there and, and take the Eucharist, but something told me that it wasn't right. It wasn't right to take it in the state I was. And I said, I, I got to go to confession. I, I got to do something. I, I have, I can go and I have the sacraments. Why don't I just go? So for this girl, I went and I went and I, I I went to confession and it was a beautiful confession. Jesus arranged everything. There was a, wow. a, a priest that was visiting uh, the church that day when I asked for confession. And it was not the priest that, yeah, that was usually there. It was a beautiful confession. God spoke to me and I realized that I, I when I came out of that confession, it's like a lot of weight was lifted off of me. And... I just, I just had to go. I had to take the Eucharist. I had to do something. But right before I could do that, right before that Sunday, this girl breaks up with me. So I'm thinking to myself, "Whoa, what just happened?" And then, and then I'm, I start going crazy later on. Wait, what just happened? I thought I was doing things good. I thought, I thought I really, she really liked me. I thought I, I thought I loved her. That she loved me. Now I'm just going crazy. Right, the devil's just putting all these things in my mind, and I'm just going completely crazy, bizarre again. I'm, I'm like, I'm starting to enter this state that I've never been in my life. I mean, I really hit rock bottom because I tried to find happiness and everything, and I never found it. And I thought I found something there, and then it was broken and completely vanished. And when this is all happening, I I just I can't even think, and I'm just I'm just devastated. And my dad calls. He's you know the many times that he's moved here and there, so he was at another town, and he calls me and he says, "Why don't you go to mass?" And it was a Monday, and I say, "Why would I go to mass on a Monday? The least thing I want to do is think about God, because the only reason I was going to God was because of this girl." Was for the girl. And he says, "Just go, just go." And so my dad convinced me. I went. I said, "I have nothing else to lose. I have nothing else." And so I go, I go on my skateboard and I get there to the chapel and 
I've been at this chapel before and I've like I've said I know it's the house of God but I don't know that it's really God present there uh and praise be to God there was no mass why do I say this because I knew I know that if there would have been a mass I wouldn't have understood I wouldn't have understood what Jesus wanted to reveal that day and so I'm alone at this chapel never been alone at this chapel and I just get really curious and I start looking around I start just poking things and finally something attracts me to go down the aisle and I'm going down the aisle and I see this little box and and inside the, well this little box has two doors these two little two doors and when you open these two little doors there's a glass and behind that glass is Jesus is Jesus present in the Eucharist it was a Eucharistic chapel and like I said I don't know that Jesus is really there I don't even know Jesus and I open these doors and as I open these doors I see God himself I see God himself I see Jesus I see I see him and I feel his love and I feel him hugging me and just just touching my heart and I feel him telling me that he loves me and that I I had my sin present at that time then I realized that everything that I had done throughout my life was just sinful actions it's almost as if I I just knew that I, what I have done was wrong in his eyes and he said but even after all of this I love you he said I love you and he just became my best friend my my love my one true love my my Jesus my best friend my brother my father my my savior my savior he saved me from my sins he saved me from my darkness he saved me from my depression he saved me from all that was haunting me and I was I was set free at that moment I met him I met Jesus this moment happened with you and God. And did you know at that point that Satan was forever gone out of your life? And the second part of this is, did you tell your dad? Because it seems like your dad's prayers and your grandmother's prayers were answered and they needed to know that. So can you answer that very quickly? Yes, they knew later on, but uh, Satan wasn't completely gone yet. So that's the second part. Oh, wow. So from childhood to um, inviting Satan into his body, into his mind, and the prayers of his grandmother and of his father that protected him and fought for him when he was too weak to fight for himself. And God spared you. It's such a blessing. It really is. So you went and you opened the glass and inside. Yeah, take it from there. So when I opened the doors, I... I see God with, I just know that it's God. In my mind, in my heart, I know that it's God. When I mean, when I say I see God, I saw him in the Eucharist. I saw the Eucharist and I knew that it was God. I knew that that was my Savior. I knew yeah. that that was Jesus. And at that moment, I was set free. I was, I, I, I got to know him. I got to know him and I got to, to love him. And he became my best friend. Everything that I ever needed, he became my, my first true and only love. He just became everything I ever needed. Wow. What an amazing story. And you're only 17. And there's so many more pages that are going to be written. You know? <laughs> what, what a grace that he showed you himself in such a real way. At such an early stage in your life. Oh, I want to ask so much more now. But I guess we have to have to end this yeah <laughs> oh okay well i want to thank you we're going to bring you back for part two and we'll explain to our viewers what happened to oswaldo sanchez after he had a physical encounter with the lord in the eucharist and you're going to come back and share that with us won't you for sure i'd be glad to awesome well then i just want to say god bless you to each of you watching Thank you, Oswaldo, for sharing. If you don't mind, in all that you've been through, I'd like to ask you, could you close us in a prayer? Oh, for sure. I'd be glad to. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for just having us here today, for having me here today. It's such a blessing. Thank you so much for, for your merciful love. Thank you for all the viewers watching at home. Please bless them and keep them safe. Let them know that you love them no matter what. 
and just keep blessing us, keep blessing this ministry. And thank you, Mama Mary, for always being with us. Thank you, Mama Mary. Amen. Thank you, Mother Mary, for being here in this hour, for being present when mm -hmm. us, Waldo, needed you most and you brought your son to protect him and save him. So each and every one of you watching tonight, we say thank you. I'm Christine Bacon for Christine Watkins, and we hope that you too will find your way home.